is the 220-yard hurdle in the Golden Jubilee meeting of the Benoni Harriers, held at Willowmore Park. Both the club, and indeed Benoni itself, are 50 years old. The 220-yard hurdles held a thrilling finish, with Jay Milan inching out Jay van der Merwe in 24.5 seconds. E. Nielsen failed in one of his pole vault attempts, but managed to gain second place when he cleared 11 feet 6. The record for South Appleton stands at 13 feet 9 inches. It's held by A.S. Berger, who won today with a vault just under 12 feet. The main attraction was Gunnar Nielsen of Denmark, joint world record holder for the 1500 meters, who ran in an invitation race against some of South Africa's best. From the start, Athol Jennings went into the lead. Nielsen lay in second position, with Paul Soyn hard on his heels. That was the position for two laps. Then Nielsen took the lead, and Klein Hans of the Western Province took up second place, behind the free-striding Dane. Nielsen was not being allowed to have things all his own way. This effort, combined with the altitude, put Klein Hans virtually out of the race. But there was a last lap thrill for spectators when Paul Soyn took the lead. He broke the South African record, but Gunnar Nielsen's driving finish gave the Dane a seven-yard victory in three minutes, 52.2 seconds. A great performance by one of the world's greatest athletes. At Windsor, Princess Margaret met former marathon champions, including the holder Jim Peters, before starting the 1955 race for the Sporting Life Trophy. And away they go, a field of 198, with over 26 grueling miles ahead to the finish at Chiswick Stadium. Meanwhile, as we went on to Chiswick to watch the Kinnaird Trophy meeting and await their arrival, the marathon developed into a three-man race between Jeff Hyden, the favourite, Eric Smith and RAF Sergeant Bill McMinnis. In the stadium, the huge crowd proclaimed the appearance of a track favourite, and sure enough, in the three miles event, there he was, Chris Chatterway, running with his club Achilles. A forward move now, as Chris comes up into second place behind Ken Norris. Then, in the last of 12 laps, Chatterway pulls out an incredible burst to sprint away and win. Time, 13 minutes, 33 seconds, the new record for the meeting. Soon after, a terrific roar greeted the marathon leader, Sergeant Bill McMinnis, who pulled away from his two rivals just before reaching the stadium. After 26 miles, the 40-year-old RAF sergeant makes light work of two laps of the track and wins by 100 yards in two hours, 26 minutes, 22 seconds. Well earned congratulations from Jim Peters and the presentation of a coveted trophy. London, the three A's championships of the White City. In the six miles, Gordon Pirrie and Ken Norris fought a grim duel for supremacy. Then, with one lap to go, Pirrie, overcome perhaps by the heat and the punishing pace, suddenly pulled up, dazed and exhausted. Norris finished alone in great style. Despite the continued heat, the following day brought a fine tactical battle in the mile between Ken Wood of Sheffield, number 34, and Brian Houghton, number 21. Both played a waiting game, each closely watching his rival. Then, Houghton raced ahead in the back stretch. And the finishing speed of Houghton, last year's half-mile champion, won the day. The time, 4 minutes, 5.4 seconds. As usual, the appearance of Chris Chatterway, number six in the three miles, brought the inevitable talk of world records. But once again, Chatterway was content to beat the man, not the clock, as he overtook the New Yorkshire star Derek Ibbotson, number 16, in the final lap. A win by 25 yards, another great Chatterway performance. White City, back from their exhausting Iron Curtain tour, British athletes faced a strong international challenge in the Daily Express budget meeting. In the 100 yards, it was Hans Germa of West Germany who won in 9.8 seconds. But there was no challenge to Diane Leather in the mile. The Birmingham girls shattered their own world record at the time of 4 minutes, 45 seconds. With Chatterway and Pirrie not competing, Ken Wood and Derek Ibbotson were our leading hopes in the 5,000 meter. But then, Irmali Tapali of Finland came with a terrific finishing burst. A real 
Now's time for race tactics for the finish star. Runners from America, West Germany and Australia were among the star-studded field for the half mile. But we had Brian Houston in tremendous form following his great victories in Moscow and Prague. In breathtaking style, he passed his overseas rivals and returned the time only three tenths of a second outside the world record. Yes, home or away, Brian Houston leads the field. In the steeplechase, Carbonen of Finland set the pace, but now his shadow, John Disley of Wales, has taken the lead. One by one, Disley has beaten nearly all the top-ranking steeplechasers. Now he strikes Carbonen off his list as he races away to set up a British all-comers record. Disley now has only one rival left, Kermit, the Polish world record holder. Goodwood in the Cape stages a festival to celebrate its golden jubilee. The idea was to give its inhabitants something to remember, and it certainly did that. The bands played and everything took on a soft glow, reflecting the radiance of Goodwood's beauty queen. At a sports meeting, Springbok Jan Barnard went straight into the lead during his attempt to beat the South African six-mile record. The record stands at 30 minutes 23.6 seconds, but had no pace of stitch, he did well to finish within 40 seconds of the record time. An excellent performance by the Springbok distance man. A goodly gathering of the leading wheelers got underway in a long distance cycle event. The field settled down and was still comparatively well bunched with five laps left to go. In the meantime, however, several other events in a well organized but crowded program were decided. Returning to the cycle race, it ended in a triumph for the Belleville Club, which filled the first three places. The White City spotlights the growing prestige of British women athletes when June Paul, number two in dark dress, wins the 100 metres during the evening news London Budapest bloodlit meeting. June won the 220 yards too, a great double. And with a winning jump of five feet six inches, Thelma Hopkins reached gold medal standard in the last big test before Melbourne. Often unnoticed at these meetings, throwing the hammer proved a fiery spectacle, especially when Josef Schadmack, the 1952 Olympic champion, threw the illuminated ball 195 feet 8 inches. Early hopes of victory in the 100 meters turned to dismay when champion John Young fell while leading with a torn muscle. The winner was Hungarian star Jakob Pi. Thrill followed thrill, especially in the 5,000 meter. In the last lap, the famous Chavo looked the winner. But watch Frank Sando, number two, snatch a dramatic victory right on the tape. Once again, Sando's never-say-die spirit had triumphed. The 1500 meters proved another tremendous fillip, with Derek Ibbotson, number one, battling it out with Laszlo Chavari, the four-minute miler. the tape, Ibbotson was leading by inches. A great London victory that inspires confidence for those sterner battles ahead. The odds hurdles in the Johannesburg Festival Athletic Meeting. A warm-up for trials a week later in Port Elizabeth. Darnie Berger narrowly beat Kuz van der Merwe in 14.5 seconds. And Darnie on the right has since been chosen for the Olympics. In the women's 100-yard sprint, as in most events, the slow, soft track did little to put performances in their true perspective. Elaine Barker's 11.6 seconds was a much better effort than the figure suggests. Elaine Barker on the left has not managed to gain Olympic selection, but high jumper Hermina Kayser has. Using an old-fashioned orthodox style, Hermina Kayser cleared 5 feet 4 and 3 quarter inches, a new South African record. Another to wear the green and gold at Melbourne will be Neville Price. Neville Price has shown that he can rise to the occasion when the competition is tough. Another springbok on view was Elaine Winter, who won the 80 metres hurdle. Getting within three tenths of a second of her South African record was excellent under the conditions. She can and probably will do even better Elbin. <laughs> Start of the women's hundred sprint at the Scottish gathering held at the wondrous Johannesburg. A time only three tenths of a second outside the Transvaal record, 
was set by Elaine Barker, the South African University's champion. There was a large field for the 880, main interest centering round the performance of Springbok Paul Soin. This meeting gave a few pointers to the Olympic trials which are to be held in October. Conditions today were against record breaking and indeed no new records were set. But Paul Soin won comfortably enough to show that he is Transvaal's leading contender for Olympic honours. The men's hundred was a duel between Phillips and Findlay. Young Phillips crammed on the pace to win easily in 9.7 seconds, a performance which must enhance Henry Phillips' Melbourne chances. In the 120 yards hurdle, Van der Merwe raced away from Torrens to win in 14.7 seconds, only one tenth of a second outside the record. He too should uphold the fine achievement set by Springbok hurdlers in the past. Long jump was won by Neville Price, 23 feet 10. One of the most interesting events was the three mile, which started off in too leisurely a fashion to result in a particularly good time. In fact, it was nearly a minute outside the record. But for lack of pacemakers, Springbok Ethel Jennings went to the front with William. Then suddenly, marathon runner Mercer Davis challenged, and Jennings had to pull out a little extra to win. Williams was second. Ethel Jennings showed enough class to warrant consideration. In fact, this early season meeting looked promising all round. They're off in the men's 100-yard sprint during the South African University's Athletic Championship. Beating even time, Willie Nell of Pretoria just edged out Cobra Squart of Stellenbosch. The meeting was held at Kent Park, Johannesburg. In the women's 100, Edith Allnut of Rhodes won from Elaine Barker of Witt and Tina Lewis of Stellenbosch. Danny Berger of Free State set a new record in the pole vault, a great achievement in the face of competent competition. Stellenbosch won the men's competition by one point, aided by Koba Swart, who won both hurdle events. The 120-yard hurdle race was crammed with incidents from start to finish. The women's competition also went to Stellenbosch by one point. And a notable performance in winning the double was Tina Lutz's narrow victory over Elaine Barker of Wits in the 220. Congratulations to Stellenbosch for taking the palm in a meeting which put several new records in the book.